rectify this accord quickly. It will be an agreement that would revolutionize the way Africa trades. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area would open up a market of 1.2 billion people with a combined GDP of about 3 trillion US dollars. The initiative, which is one of the flagship projects of the AU's Agenda 2063, is set to become one of the world's largest trading areas. AU Chairperson Musa Faki Mahamat told leaders present at this week's expected signing that it's a choice between maintaining the status quo or effecting a paradigm shift. One question, only one, arises in our face. Can we dare and disappoint so many expectations? Can we accept to take the risk? collectively or individually, of postponing the execution of this major strategic project. At a time when the rest of the world is coming together and consolidating itself in the resolute defense of its strategic interests, we have no choice but to forge ahead. But signs the dream could be stalling emerged when Nigeria's President Buhari and Uganda's Museveni abruptly canceled their trips to Rwanda. Nigerian officials say business groups objected to the signing of the agreement, saying there had not been enough consultations. It isn't clear just yet why Museveni opted out. However, the AU's Commissioner for Trade and Industry, Albert Muchanga, says he is confident the deal will take off. Due to the need for stakeholder consultations and also due to the need for them to go through uh, existing parliamentary procedures, they may not be able to sign this time. Now, this is an extraordinary summit, which is being held in March. In July, we have the ordinary summit. We foresee a situation where, where a, lo a, a lot of them would have finalized their processes and sign on. Other countries present have raised additional concerns about the fine print, such as dispute resolution mechanisms in the CFTA and the protocol on the free movement of people. The UN's Economic Commission for Africa, which is playing an integral part in helping African countries put together the final agreement, says there are vulnerabilities in the final document, but a bargain can be reached. There were some risks uh, as regards smallholder farmers, uh, informal cross-border traders, um, some risks, uh, uh, issues that needed to be addressed uh, to um, facilitate um, and grow the trade, which is an important part of um, intra-African trade. Um, uh, we pointed out some risks uh, as regards gender, women, um, uh, youth, employment, uh, the agricultural sector overall, which is the largest sector. So, um, uh, yeah, there are vulnerabilities. While we mark the important progress made, the road does not end here today. Critical steps remain. We must develop the national schedules for tariff reduction in trade in goods and for priority services. We must complete the annex on rules of origin. Above all, we must ensure that the agreement is ratified through our respective national processes. The challenge for us will be to see, and the world is watching, how many of us actually in 180 days are able to ratify the Continental Free Trade Agreement. As D-Day draws closer, AU ambassadors and ministers of finance are working to fine-tune the agreement. It still isn't clear how many states are needed to sign the trade deal for it to come into force. Leaders will settle for between 15 to 37 signatures. After the signing this week, the deal will have to go through individual country consultations in order to be ratified. Uche Okoronkwa, CGTN, Kigali, Rwanda.